listen, Nate Diaz is a cool guy. Nate Diaz is entertaining. Nate Diaz fights his heart out, and there's something about his personality, and he has a certain charisma, him and Nick. They're very unique individuals. They're true fighters. We were talking about athletes and fighters. They're fighters. Also very good athletes as well in their own right, but they would definitely fit the fighter mold. They fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. They have that attitude, that do or die. Um, and they, 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 they're... they're very entertaining to watch and Nate Diaz now is a huge star of course those two fights with Conor McGregor were a huge part of that they really catapulted him into the stratosphere of MMA stardom but you know it's not like he's an unbeatable fighter so for Dustin Poirier it actually makes a lot of sense I mean his record is 19 wins and 11 losses mm. of course his last loss to McGregor prior to that he lost to Dos Anjos then he lost to Josh Thompson. That was a head kick knockout. Then he lost to Benson Henderson. I mean, these are all very good guys. So no shame in losing to them, of course. Lost to Rory McDonald, Don Young Kim. Again, massive welterweights, them two. Uh, Gray Maynard back in the day, Joe Stevenson. Now, of course, there is losses. There's lots of good wins on there as well. I mean, it's not like he's this unbeatable fight. He's a very good fight. He's very entertaining and a huge fan base. But for Dustin Poirier, it makes a lot of sense because uh, if he fights him and he beats him, which I'll make an early prediction. I I, I think Dustin beats Nate Diaz. It does no. massive things for his stock. Probably gets him very close to a title fight. But the problem is, of course, that there is a backlog there. You've got Conor McGregor fighting Khabib Namagomedov. You've got Tony Ferguson that was the interim champ that got stripped. So he's definitely got to be next. So it's, it's just a weird backlog there. Congratulations on meeting the Commander-in-Chief, Donald Trump. That was an unprecedented moment for the mixed martial arts world. You're the first UFC champ to step foot in the Oval Office, if I'm not mistaken. Tell us about the experience. Yeah, it was it was the best day of my life, you know. I, you know, I knew I was going to be doing stuff like this from the beginning. You know, I knew I was going to be making history. You know, I, I spoke this into existence. You know, I've been talking about bringing the belt to, to Trump in the Oval Office and you know, it was the best day of my life, man. Trump's a really stand-up guy, really funny guy. You know, he, he was a genuine, real guy. So, you know, we we, we shared a good moment together. And, and you know, it's it was definitely the most satisfying and, and, and best day of my life. I, you know, I'll have that moment for the rest of my life. And, and I'm just thankful I could give my belt, my world championship, UFC championship to Trump. You know, he, he was even a little surprised when I gave him the belt. He was trying to give it back to me, but I said, no, Trump, this belt is for you. You are the champion of the American people. So, you know, I, I had, you know, it was the best day of my life. No kidding, man. So it wasn't just the photo op with the belt. You actually gave him the title. Yeah, we we actually I actually gave him the title, and we he, you know he sat at his desk. We 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 shared some stories, you know. We laughed a little bit, we, you know. We just hung out for you know a good thirty forty five minutes, and it's just bullshit. And he's a big MMA fan, big uh big uh, UFC fan, and and uh, big wrestling fan. I didn't know he used to wrestle back when he was in high school. So it's pretty cool that we come from the same lineage, wrestlers, you know. I guess that's what that's what all the greats come from, you know. That's what, why we are the great American winning machine. You can't stop this. Las Vegas and Dan, is it right in saying that this is the biggest fight of all time? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we you know with the rise of the two fighters, obviously Khabib was, was quite simmering, simmering for about fifteen fights until he kind of hit the UFC, and then 
he, I mean, he's become a massive star because he's so ferocious and so dominant. And then Conor McGregor is well, the biggest star we've ever had in the sport. And fortunately, they're both in the same weight class. They're very, very different in characters and, and in fighting styles as well. I, I, it's a great match. It's a great and it could go either way as well. That's what makes it so exciting. If you've watched any of the promotional material for UFC 229, the whole bus antics, the fact they took on this bus, which at the time in the UFC's eyes, Dan's, was a disgrace to the sport. It's now a promotional tool. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's a part of the narrative. We can't avoid that. It's the same situation with John Jones and, and Cormier when they had that scuffle at the uh, in the lobby of the MGM. It, you know, it, it's it, that's why we tune in. It's the same thing with Cody and, uh, and uh, TJ at the weekend. I mean, how many times did we see Cody grab TJ by the throat in uh, in the Ultimate Fighter House? Yeah. I mean, that that's assault in America. You know, it, we get away with a lot over here because it's a different kind of culture. But in America, everyone's suing everybody. And there's a lawsuit in there, but the UFC are using it for promotion because, I'll be honest, it makes me want to watch the fight more. <laughs> you know, I like that drama. I like to see two guys, uh, two guys genuinely not like each other. It's it's good to watch two com uh, competitors compete, but it's best to watch two fighters fight. For people who don't know Dan, who don't know Khabib Nurmagomedov, just explain what sort of fighter he is, where he's come from, because he really is a Terminator. He is, yeah. I mean, he's a he's a Dagestani wrestler. He's trained by his father, and he's got a, a crew of guys around him that are all incredibly strong wrestlers as well. Um, his striking is very unorthodox. He spent his recent years preparing at AKA. Um, so obviously he's got Cormier and Velasquez and and all the other great coaches, Bob Cook, uh, you know Javier Mendez. There's a lot of knowledge in that gym, and if you've got a raw talent and a, and a strong wrestler like Khabib. Um, trying to turn him into a mixed martial artist, it, it, you know, he's he's a great uh, a great uh, commodity to play with as a coach. And since he's been in the UFC, I mean, he's not really had to fall back on his striking a great deal. We've seen a, a couple of knockouts from him, but they were very unorthodox punches. I mean, I, I've broken them down on inside the octagon. It's I, we'll call it the eagle punch or whatever you like, but it's like a it's like an uppercut, but his arm is in a position of a hook. It's a very very strange technique, but it works really well for him and it sets up his takedowns. And that's ultimately what his game is about. He wants to smash you up against the fence. He, he ties people's legs up. He, he triangles his legs around there so they don't have a, a base, don't have a, a way out. And then he beats them up. And the most terrifying thing for me about it is that he talks to them while he's doing it. You go back and watch the Michael Johnson fight. He's saying, he's saying, you know, I need to fight for the title. You know, I deserve this. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very uh, unnerving to see that happening. And I can't even imagine what it would be like as an opponent. <laughs> so he's, he's terrifying. And now because his English is getting better as well, he's even more intriguing because we're starting to get inside his head a bit more and learn about him as an individual. He's got a real character and he's got a lot of personality as well. Because a bit like Beyonce or Bono, we've just known him by this one name, this Khabib, this this Dagestani. Um, so what happens in the fight then? Because you mentioned there, Dan, you mentioned Inside the Octagon. This is where you break down with John Gooden. You break down the fights. 30 minutes, you can watch them. Great detail as well. I'm sure you've had this fight on your mind for a, one, for a long time because it's been swirling around. How would you see the fight going? Um, the first thing that we've got to think about is how Connor's going to approach this because he knows Khabib's going to come forward. It's going to be difficult for Connor to push Khabib up against the fence like he has done everybody else. And that's where he usually lines people up for the power, uh, the power left hand. It's going to be different in this one because Khabib's going to push forward no matter what Connor's throwing. He's, he's going to be willing to block. He did the same thing to Edson Barboso, who's a vicious kicker. And he walked through most of his kicks, knows it's, it's going to hurt, knows he's going to have to weather an early storm. But he also knows that when he gets his hands on someone, he does what he likes. And because he's still unbeaten, it's never been proven any different to him. No one's ever really caught him with a good shot and put him down. I mean, we saw him hurting in the Michael Johnson fight. But Khabib's main vulnerability for me in this fight is that he's got no footwork. He, he only knows forward. There's no idea of cutting off the octagon until he's actually got his hands on someone. So that's where Connor gets into this fight. He's very intelligent, like Nick said. He's going to be good at circling off and walking uh, Khabib onto that left hand. I think this is going to be a very different version of Connor than we've ever seen. I think we're going to see a lot more lateral movement and more footwork. I think he's going to come in slightly lighter and better conditioned. Um, and I, th I think he's going to expect to be taken down at least at least a couple of times. But you know, going back to the point I made earlier, the, the quick turnaround of this fight to me tells me that he's thinking if he can get Khabib to be mainly focused on his weight cut for the fight and overconfident that he's going to be able to do what he always does, then Connor can predict what he's going to do when he actually gets in there and then set him up. And I think that, you know, whether in an early storm is likely for Connor, I think he's probably going to have to maybe even get out the first round, get back to his feet a couple of times. But I think he'll find a place for that left hand at some point, maybe late second, early third. 
and I think Khabib will walk onto it. Uh, and we've seen him slow down in the in the Ally Quinter fight. First time we've seen him do five rounds. Yeah. He did slow down. You know, there, there were points where you th- start thinking to yourself, if he was fighting Connor here and there was that sharp left hand in in the, in the toolbox, he'd be in trouble. 